What's up, Peter Vogue here. We're in Calabasas, California, about to meet with Romeo Miller and dive deep into what's made him a success from child celebrity to sustained success for the last 20 years. I'm excited to bring you guys some value. <laughs> You gotta know that you're doing this for more than just a moment. To truly be successful, to truly win, you need opposition. Sugar skull rum. I'm gonna need you to pop that thing open right quick. Let's do it. Take, take a seat, pop that thing. Before we start this interview, pop that thing open. Tell the world how it tastes. We celebrating life right now. And that's what the, the young people don't know. The real way to making money, even what my pops did, is own having a brand. You know, this I learned that from him years ago. Yeah. You got a clothing line now, you got you guys got a movie. Got yeah. You need socks. You guys ready? <laughs> I like coconut. Uh, let's see. Damn. <laughs> Look at the react. Can we rewind on his reaction right quick? You don't even have to mix it, huh? Nah, this is the best tasting rum on the planet. So what the world don't know is... I mean, I don't want to get too crazy. <laughs> it's crazy right now in the meeting rooms. Like, people trying to... Damn. Them. This is really good. Yeah. People trying to buy us out because they don't want to go against us. We ain't got the best tasting product out there. I mean, this is... The it usually wins voice. eventually is the best taste. Exactly. Damn. Yeah, so... You guys That's got, the only way to get it started, man. You That's guys got to get, get the interview started right there. Love it. Dude, I'm excited, man. I've been, I've been excited about this interview for like the last six months because, simply because of the impact it's going to make yeah. on the younger generation. Because we both impact a lot of young people. And uh, I'm excited because of that impact. And this is going to be online for the next hundred years. So I'm exactly. excited, man, for both of our kids to see exactly. that we both don't have yet. Exactly. <laughs> but they're coming. I like the way you think, though, yeah. man. Yeah, for real. It's all, it's all legacy focused. What yeah. I see from you is almost everything is long term. And yeah. I want to thank you, first of all, for just taking the time out of your day. You're always on set. You're yeah. filming movies. You got a movie coming out. You had an yeah. album come out. You have your own movie studio. You also have three different shows you're doing Empire yeah. and yeah. X on the Beach. You got X on and the Growing Beach, Up Hip Hop. Growing Up Hip Hop. Uh, had Famous in Love. Um, the list goes on. Got seven films coming out next year. We got the brands that we have, rap snacks, rap snacks. for the culture. Um, we got a little bit of everything, Romeo Rome, land, Rome everything. Line. So yeah. here's my first question, why? Yeah. You already have the money. We're yeah. in a, a multi-million dollar home in Calabasas. You have other homes, you're still grinding, why? Simply where I'm from. You know, my family, we come from New Orleans. It's a hurricane city. Uh, if y'all know about Hurricane Katrina, that wiped away people's lives, but that didn't mean that it was over. So I've always had this mind frame of you could lose it like that. I seen death at an early age with my little cousins. You know, even back in my little Romeo days, I wrote about the songs. I saw my cousin die right in front of me at the age of eight. Then my next oldest cousin die when I'm 13 years old. So I always had this, you know, this view on life that it's, you could get it like that and it, it could go like that. And I'm always grateful because of where we do come from. My family come from nothing. You know, I think my pops, you look right here, this is history. But we were never supposed to be here. I got cousins that's dead and in jail with their parents, either buried or locked up. So for me, it's always been grateful. I, ne I never grew up like the typical uh, young celebrity child star. You know, I grew up where, shit, we'll go out on the road, we'll make a lot of money, but we back in the hood, back in the streets. You know, my 4th of July's, people don't know this, but it was out with my dad and his homies and they shooting guns. It wasn't fireworks, you know, it's shooting guns to the sky. So I just think I was put in a position where I was able to see a little bit of everything. You know, not just the good, not just the bad, but a little bit of both. And I've always been grateful. As long as I'm here, I'm going to work. Like, that's what I, was, that's what I learned. You know, my pop's one of the greatest hustlers out there. And he passed that, passed that down to me to where I got to go get it. I got have a trillion dollars. I'm going to go work. You know, I'm a workaholic. It's in my blood. And I'm always grateful because I know where we could have been. So people think you grew up like in yeah. Calabasas or in yeah. Beverly Hills, but you actually grew up in New Orleans, which is yeah. a rough area. Yeah, I mean, I was born in the Calio projects. So even when I, I came into this world, it wasn't like my family knew what they, they was gonna do with me. You know, there was times where I didn't eat as a child. And um, it's one of those things where 
I did have this good balance. When I was younger, I grew up in New Orleans, went out to Baton Rouge, then moved down to H-Town. And my friends, I go over to their house, and we'll be playing basketball, and we'll hide when a car comes because we thought it was a drive-by. Like, that was my childhood. It wasn't like, you know... Um, so subconsciously, it's in you still. Yeah, it's still in me because I grew up with it. Like, I remember one time I played a prank on my dad down in Texas when we uh, moved out there. That don't sound good already. Yeah. <laughs> I played a prank on my pops. He had this bulletproof monster truck. He come home, it's like two in the morning. I'm like, mom, I'm about to go scare dad. She's like, no boy, don't do that. So I just ran. Literally my dad parked I'm behind a bush. As he goes into the house, I pop up behind him like, boo. My dad turned around with the gun on me as a little kid. So it's like, I didn't know that literally two hours before they had some dudes trying to get at him where they shot, out, shot at his truck. But it's like, even though my pops was making this money and building this empire, it's, this is what I tell people. You can go give somebody $100 million right now. That doesn't mean they change overnight. So if you go give somebody in the hood $100 million, that don't mean their, their life changed. Their family's still in the hood. They still got to, you know, uh, overcome certain obstacles. But for me, I've seen a balance. And I thought that was always a blessing for me to be able to go to the, the best of the best neighborhoods, but also see the worst of the worst. And I think that's why it's important for this interview, because somebody like me not getting interviewed a lot, sadly. They don't want to talk to somebody who's actually on the right path or got their shit together. No drama. Yeah. yeah. As a kid, they tell you, you know, do the right thing, follow your dreams. I did that my entire career. And there was moments where I'm like, well, why wasn't I on Oprah? Or, why didn't I get hit up to go do this talk show? And then this person who just did some negative, they have that opportunity. But that's the facts of the world. You know, people don't want to praise you when you're actually doing it, or if you're alive. That's huge, man. And a lot yeah. of times, the legends, they're hated in the yeah. moment, and then when they die, everyone's praising them. Sadly, that's how it goes. and this is the truth. Like, my pops always say, give people their roses while they're here. What I'm gonna do with them when I'm gone? But sadly, if you look at this, all this history, even what me and my pops did is like, we are the real life pursuit of happiness, right? Like when you look at somebody who came from the struggle, a, a rags to riches story where my dad wasn't supposed to make it out. You know, he had this son where life could have been different for me. I could be a totally different dude right now. I could be a totally different dude right now running the streets. But uh, my pops had a vision, you know, and then that didn't mean it was gonna just pass down to me. But I seen the sacrifice that he gave to not just his family, but his friends, everybody around him. I'm like, I want to give back to this empire as well. I want to keep this legacy going. But sadly, I don't feel we'll be ever appreciated until, until we're dead and gone. That's just the truth. It may sound harsh, but people will start pulling up all the history that we've made once we've passed. It's kind of backwards. Yeah. Because you look at life. I mean, it's the truth. Whitney Houston, as soon as she passed, the, passed away, people realized how talented she was. People realized the history she made, the impact that she had. And then we go back, Michael Jackson. People laughed at this man all the way until his death. Then you realize that this is probably one of the most talented human beings that's ever gonna walk this planet. This is Michael Jackson. This is the man who have people in, in jails across the world learning his dance moves. Prince, same thing. People that truly shifted our culture. And one yeah. thing why I want to do this too is we're here to change that. Let's appreciate yeah. people while they're here. Yeah. You're all about positive vibes. One thing yeah. that stood out to me is you're grinding all day, six, seven, eight days straight. You're yeah. still a Bible study. You're yeah. still picking your younger brother and sister up from school. I got to go do that after this. So it's I, amazing. I go pick them up, you know, then I head to set. And it's, it's all about priorities in life. You know, um, people always say that uh, there's no such thing as being too busy. That has some truth to it. I'm gonna tell y'all out there, okay, to the young fellas and ladies out there watching this. Um, when you're really busy, you do have to sacrifice. And that's all it is. Like you may be too busy to do certain things, but you're gonna sacrifice for the things you really want to. And for me, that's always gonna be God and family. You know, that's why it's hard for me to be in a, a relationship because it's God and family gonna come first in my goals. And anybody, if they wanna get to know me on that personal level, they gotta realize that's what it is, you know, because everything else is a sacrifice. They have times where I'm not eating till, you know, 5 p.m. in the day. They have times where I'm not sleeping till three days later. So it's like, it is a sacrifice, but you gotta sacrifice for something. 
what do you want to instill in your younger siblings? You're the oldest of eight. Yeah. Um, you grew up Calio Projects, New Orleans, partly here. They're growing up in Calabasas. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> Big difference. Is there things you're trying to instill in them? Do you catch them going specific direction? You're like, hey, I want you to remember the family yeah. legacy. Or is it more like they're just seeing it so they are that philosophy? Yeah, uh, me and my pops talk about this all the time because we just like, even my cousin, it's like, what clicked for you? And I tell them, like, I was still there. Like, I was there with y'all back in Mo City, you know, back in New Orleans, you know, back, back in the streets where, like I said, my pops started making money and everything, but we didn't just move out to Beverly Hills, you know. And even when we did take little family vacays, we'll fly the whole damn family out there. So it was like the real life Beverly Hillbillies. So with my little brothers and sisters, it's just like, it has to be something else to motivate you. And uh, my pops is really good at showing them where we come from. You know, we'll have times where we take them back to the Cali, yo. We go see where, you know, where I was born, where pops uh, lived with 18 people in a two bedroom. It's like, they would have loved to just have this living room back in the day. Like my pops didn't have a bed till he went to college. So um, showing them them things, they're really um, receptive to it. They, they pay attention, they're smart kids, but it is a difference because they're away from it. So how do you truly connect to something if you're away from it? And that's where a lot of these kids out here in these rich neighborhoods, people don't understand, it's actually more difficult for them because they don't know what the real world is. You know, for me, I literally was growing up where I was getting in like fights, people trying to, uh, I got in a fight at school uh, at my Catholic school, St. Mary's in Texas, because a dude wanted my apple. So he paid these dudes 25 cent a piece to hold me down what? while he come hit me and take my damn apple. apple. Yeah. Best believe I found him right in front of the principal office. I didn't even care. I had to do what I had to do. But it's like, that's how I grew up. I'm not praising, praising that, but it's like I grew up differently than what people see on TV. And it's something where in my life the real no. You know, even like the real OGs, you know, people who really come from the streets, they know and understand everything me and my pops been through. That's why we are the way we are. I ain't gotta try to act hard. I ain't gotta act gangsta. I ain't gotta, you know, put tattoos on my face to prove a point. Because if anybody could do that, if we being real, I'm the perfect candidate. My pops Master P. Like this is a dude who's really from the streets who, who saved Snoop Dogg life, went to Suge itself. It's like, we got soldiers everywhere. But that's why people respect us because they know we're trying to make a generational wealth, you know? And I just think that's a, I think the coolest thing my little brothers and sisters get to see, they get to see that transformation, they get to see that growth. But like I say, sometimes it is hard because it is different. It, it is different. But at the end of the day, um, I think that's why a lot of those kids, they struggle more. Because you gotta imagine, if you don't have nothing, if you're just a kid in the projects, you won't work your ass off to make a difference, to get your mom out of this apartment, out of this neighborhood. If you're given everything, it's like, what are you really doing it for? And you gotta come with who's around you for what. These kids grow up fast in these rich neighborhoods. It's like, you got grown people hanging out with you because your pops is this legendary actor or this legendary businessman or singer. It's like, life is, it come at you fast. So every, everybody has pros and cons. And that's what I try to teach my siblings. It's like, look, everybody got pros and cons. You can't compare your life to them. They can't compare their life to yours. And I think that's where we mess up as a whole in the world, where we get, the world is so narrow-minded because we only know what we know. Like, if I was the president, I'm not saying I want to be the president because you've seen what happened with Obama, he went great. So being the president, that's a stressful job. But I always tell people, like, I want to be the president without being the president one day. But if I was a president, it's very simple. I'll just say, it's not about understanding, but it's about accepting. And I don't understand how people don't get that. That's the basic concept of life. You're never gonna understand me 100%. I'm not gonna understand you 100%. We're not gonna understand him. It's like a black, a, a, a black man is not gonna understand a white man 100%. A, a girl isn't gonna understand a man 100%. But what we could do is accept. So. I think it's less about understanding and trying to hop in those people's shoes, but just accepting that it is a difference. We all go through different struggles. And leading by example, which is what you're doing. With yeah. your, I see the respect they have for you. Yeah. And that's something you can't really buy or teach. It's just 
They either have respect, just like kids for their family. They either have respect for yeah. their parents or they don't. Yeah. And the fact that you have that much respect for your dad is ad, it's admirational and yeah. inspiring. And people need to understand that that's not something that you buy. It's not like, yeah. I'm going to buy my son's respect. It yeah. comes from leading by example, being there, spending time, yeah. showing the way, giving the right philosophies. That's so the that's, key word, respect. Yeah. That's what my dad taught me from day one. Even when I was growing up, Lil Romeo, it's like people wonder why I didn't get in trouble, why people don't bother me. It's like, it's respect. I don't care. I could be in the nicest neighborhood. Or I could go to the, to the craziest hood. Like, I'm going to be able to mingle everywhere because it's just a mutual respect. And I know how to give that to people so they give it back. And I think we live in a generation where people think res ha respecting people is corny. They think that respecting people is stupid because we live in social media day and age where doing stupid shit get views. So guess what happens? We had more than inspiring stuff. Yeah, it's more than inspiring. Doing something stupid will make you famous. Doing something stupid can make you rich now. So it's showing where, where is the world going? It used to be, you gotta respect the king. You gotta respect, you know, whoever's the household. Like now it's like respect is dropping and being crazy and stupid is going up and you're getting, you're getting uh, benefits for it. Sad. And that's the same thing with um, in life in general, where if you don't respect anything, you got to realize that it's going to be broken. It may look good from the outside, this and that. It's broken because there's no, there's no rules. There's no rules and regulations. You're just living this free life and this using being young and dumb as an excuse. And there's always consequences. Always you consequences. You said something, too, in an interview that stuck with me. Because <coughs> same thing, even Big Boy in L.A. Yeah. was like, I still don't understand, Romy. He said this to you. He goes, I yeah. still don't understand how, when you were a child celebrity to now, you have not been in the news, gotten in yeah. trouble, drugs, girls. He goes, I don't, I don't understand. Yeah. And you said that a lot of kids, especially child celebrities, don't understand failure. Yeah. So when something happens, their low is maybe higher than ours. Talk yeah. about that philosophy because that's crazy. That's you hit that. True. Yeah. That's one of the big keys in life. People don't understand. You can go Google um, child celebrity curse. It's real. Even people who get success at a young age is real because guess what? You look at people like Denzel Washington career. I think Denzel was like a trash man or something. Like he had to go through certain things before he had this success. Um, you look at somebody who's younger and they, they're, they're given this success at a young age and what it does, we're still growing, right? So we're still growing as humans each and every day. So imagine you give a kid all the success in the world at 16 years old. Or you, 10, 12. I was, yeah, I was 10 years old. Where I'm the biggest thing on the planet. But um, let's just say 16, because that's that age where you think you know everything, you're a young adult, you know, a lot of people just think they could do it on their own, right? So you give this kid everything at the age of 16. You give a man everything at the age of 35. Who do you think is gonna be more appreciative, more grateful? Somebody who had a little bit of more bumps in the road, somebody who lived on this planet a little longer because guess what, they know that yep. it's not given, it's not easy. But failure isn't real for young people and success because once you get it at such a young age, when you do fail, you think it's literally failure. It's not. Failing is just, you gotta try again. I remember, uh, I don't know the guy name, but the guy who created Starbucks, they said something like he was turned down over 10,000 times. Howard Schultz? Yeah, turned down 10,000 times, yep. yeah. I don't think he knew what failure was because it was just, okay, this is not the right timing. It's a different opportunity. And that's what happens. I'll say Justin Bieber, for example. He came at such a young age where he had all this success, billions of views on top of the world, right? So then when he's up here, people are like, wow, this kid has everything. But then when he wants to live his life and he's not Justin Bieber who's getting billions of views anymore and he just dropped down, let's say right there, the world start making fun of them. The world start calling them names. The world start saying you're not doing your job. But then let's look at a normal person's success. I'm gonna show you a normal person's success. <laughs> right here. This is a normal person's success. This is Justin Bieber's failure. The thing is, you have to know that though. As at a young age. At a young age, knowing that you may reach this high, you may reach this prime, but just because you're not maintaining that, it doesn't mean that you're still not amazing. It doesn't mean you're still not following your dreams. It doesn't mean that you're not successful. 
one thing I've realized growing up is that there's a lot of people out there who don't want to root for their childhood, uh, their childhood heroes because it's not cool. You remember the same, the thing that you liked when you were 10 years old, you don't want to tell your friends you liked it yeah. as an adult. So we live in this world where, um, like I said, we tell kids to go chase their dreams. And then the ones who actually get to their dreams earlier and sooner than the normal person, guess what? They're ridiculed after that. The thing with failure, like we was talking about, you get success at a younger age, it's hard to bounce back mm -hmm. because you think it's the end of the world. And then you think, well, people, they're not respecting me like they used to. They're not rocking with me like they used to. When, when you're older, does the judgment of others matter? It doesn't matter at all because you realize you're not hustling for somebody you'll never meet. You're not grinding for somebody that you're never going to meet. But as a kid, you're kind of doing everything yeah. for them. And that's why it sucks being so successful at a young age. You look at anybody out there, there's not too many people who have success at a young age and then they have it all together as an adult because it's not reality. What's the reason you work so hard? So you don't have to work harder, right? You work hard now so you don't have to work hard later. So when you're young and you already do that at the age 15, 16, 17, it's like you make hundreds of millions of dollars. So when you decide you don't want to go on tour or you decide you just want to be you and relax, people take it as failure. But one thing I would say, and it's in the Bible, you need opposition. To truly be successful, to truly win, you need opposition. You got to conquer something. David had to conquer Goliath. It's life. And that's what I want the kids to know that the only way you're going to win is if you overcome something. And it means more, too. That's one of the yeah. reasons I wanted to sit down with you and share your message with the world, with my audience, just with all the young entrepreneurs, athletes, entertainers, yeah. is because you actually conquered that. You conquered a lot of mountains. And you, instead of getting the deal with Nickelodeon to do yeah. four more seasons, you're like, I'm going to challenge myself. I'm going to go to college. But yeah. also, you've sustained this greatness yeah. since age 10 or 12. And yeah. it still happens. You're not. And I don't, and I don't get, and I don't get the credit for it, though. But I, don't, I don't think, yes, but I don't know if you care as much because you're that's so the thing, I don't, on I don't care. Yeah. And that's I what I that feel. Guy. Me and my cousins, I got a cousin, the world probably know him as Lil D. And my, when I was Lil Romeo, I had my cousin Lil D on me, with me. Every tour, every album, I had Lil D there. And we was looking through old photos when we was on tour doing what dudes wish they could be doing or they're doing at the age of 30. We were doing this at 15, you know, we're on tour changing lives, you know, at the age of 15. And um, my cousin was like, bro, you're too humble. He was like, if you weren't as humble as you are, sadly, you'll be more popping with this generation. And I was like, sadly, that's the truth, because I don't post any uh, of those historic moments. I don't rub it in people's face. It's kind of like it was just a phase. That How happened. do you feel when he says that, though? What, what's the emotion that comes out of you when he's like, you're too humble, you'd be bigger if you weren't humble? What it, if it's simple. It's that at the right time, and I know I'm going to be bigger than everything on the planet. So maybe it's not meant for me to be the biggest right now. But my pops always say, wrong, keep doing the right thing. Whatever you want in this world, you're going to have. And that's the sacrifice. It's always planning for the longevity, planning for the future. How many people truly want to plan for something where they don't know if it may not ever come. But that's the beauty. And that's where my fate comes in, knowing that it's bigger than right now. Like I could easily do something right that's now huge. where it's like, if I go do something stupid on TV, sadly, everything will come full circle, you know? And then I'll be the most popular thing, but I'm going to be popular for what, doing something stupid? And you're focused longer term, which is yeah. tough to do, but it takes a lot of uh, knowing yourself. Yeah. Well, I can't sell my soul. All I could do is do what I know and do what I believe in and know that it's going to it's gonna pay off in the long run.